Day after day in the months before the Allied invasion of Europe, a brief communique told the official story of mounting aerial offensives with the familiar words, planes of the Royal Air Force were over Germany in strength. But behind this official story, there was another, a story that did not have bombs and enemy targets as a main theme. This other story concerned the pilots who were completing exacting missions over Germany in good flying weather. Airmen who dropped their bomb loads accurately and escaped enemy flak unharmed, and who, mission accomplished, headed for home. Headed for home, but with anxiety and agonies of mind. For no pilot could tell if he might not return from a successful flight only to encounter fog over Britain. Time after time, the weather was one of Bomber Command's biggest enemies. Fog over British airfields became more of a menace than flak over Germany. The radio beam could help pilots approach within one or two hundred feet of the runway. But flying absolutely blind at over a hundred miles per hour, they were in imminent danger of crashing their plane and killing themselves and their crew because they could not actually see to land. As the war progressed, the increase in the weight of bomber offensives, the heavy accident rate, and the large number of potential flying hours lost as the result of fog or the threat of fog focused attention on the problem as one of extreme urgency. The Prime Minister issued a directive to Mr. Jeffrey Lloyd, then Minister in Charge of Petroleum Warfare. It is of great importance to find means to dissipate fog at airdromes. Let full experiments to this end be put in hand with all expedition. The answer was found in FIDO, code name for Fog Investigation Dispersal Operations. And here is what FIDO looks like. Gasoline burner lines laid along a runway. Not very impressive looking when not in action, but a wartime invention that has solved for the first time in history the problem of dispersing fog over airfields. This is how FIDO works. First, there are steel tanks where gasoline is stored for the installation by the side of the airdrome. They're kept filled either by road tankers or by overland pipeline from the nearest railhead. A supply main from the storage tanks flows into the pump house and a delivery main connects the pump house with the burner lines on the runway. Inside the pump house, the main fuel handling pumps are centrifugal with gasoline driven engines. Usually there are six. FIDO has been so successful in operation that it has now become a matter of routine. And a standard FIDO installation is manned by a crew of 21, a sergeant, three corporals, and 17 aircraftsmen. The burner lines are laid parallel to and some distance from each side of the main runway on the airfield. Here's a diagram of the whole layout. Fuel tanks for storage of gasoline. Pump house connected to storage tanks and burner lines by supply and delivery mains. Main and valve controls. Feed lines. Control valve. When intersecting runways are crossed, a burner pipe sunk flush with the ground is installed. There are various ways of starting up the burner lines. Here the valve control has been turned and light up is by hand. Here is another way of doing it by a mechanical device. On 
the initial light-up, a considerable quantity of smoke is created, but this clears quickly as the gasoline vaporizes. In normal fog conditions, it is possible to achieve fog clearance with Fido in 10 minutes, and in some cases, it's been done in as little as six. There are two reasons for fog. The first is condensation of moisture in the atmosphere. The second is particles of smoke and dirt suspended in the air. Fido is designed to disperse the moisture condensation type. The heat from Fido's burner lines will clear a space 1,000 yards long by 150 feet wide to a height of 100 feet. Sometimes in operation much greater areas are cleared, but that depends on wind conditions and the moisture content of the fog. Clearances of over 500 feet in height have been made in calm weather. Fog lay over a great part of England and Europe during the Christmas week of 1944, when the Germans launched their last great offensive across the Ardennes. But because of Fido, bombers were nevertheless able to take off and return to English airfields. And Allied strategic bombing thus made possible the final failure of the German push. Fog, which only a short time before had been the greatest menace to bombers, had been eliminated from runways. And Allied pilots could make safe landings in the worst possible conditions. Since the first operational use of FIDO in 1943, more than 2,500 Allied aircraft, with their crews of over 10,000 airmen, have been landed safely in fog. And FIDO installations have been much appreciated by American airmen. On one day, no less than 91 planes of the U.S. Army Air Force were brought down safely by FIDO on British airfields. Said one American pilot from Missouri, I couldn't have landed without it. I've tried eight times already, and I know. Often planes come in with Fido in such dense fog that pilots once on the ground find it impossible to drive by car to their sleeping quarters only a few miles away. security ban is lifted, Mr. Jeffrey Lloyd receives the gratitude and appreciation of the Air Force for having won with Fido a tough wartime race against time for the lives of Allied pilots. And he accepts their thanks in the name of those British people who sprang to the task with enthusiasm and added their weight to the great heave that brought success. And so today there's a new map of England, a map that shows fog-bound airmen where to land. Fifteen airfields in England have FIDO installations now, and one on the continent. The old enemy of all airborne men creeps in and drifts threateningly across the landscape. Visibility closes in from 100 yards to 50 as the white hazard takes possession of the ground. But up in the sky, pilots proceed on their missions with confidence, free of the old anxiety, sure that on their return, the warm glow of Fido's burners will guide them home to happy landing.